before I thought of uh, making this video, I had the thoughts of maybe I should replay the DLC. Maybe it's too early to make a review. Maybe I shouldn't even make this review. But I'm going to make it either way. Just because I feel the need to absolutely address the um, difficulty topic of the DLC. So today we're June 25th. The DLC came out June 21st. And I beat it Sunday night. Playing non-stop for three days straight. Well, actually, two days straight. I wasn't available to work uh, or to play Sunday the majority of the day. So it took me about two and a half days to beat, but I was playing non-stop. Um, I think it's fucking amazing. Like everyone else, uh, it, it's incredible. Probably the best content in all of Elden Ring, which is what we come to expect from, from software and their DLCs. Their DLCs tend to be the best portion of their game since they've perfected what the game is. Um, I'm just gonna, right off the bat, talk about the difficulty. When From Software made Elden Ring, they were not stupid. They understood that it's an open world game, meaning if you're stuck on a boss, you can go explore, kill an optional boss, level up, go back to the main boss, and be ready, and eventually kill him. They knew this. Which is why they added bullshit mechanics like Millennia and the lifesteal and the flurry rush that she does to counteract overleveled players. Because you are always going to be overleveled, you are always going to be overpowered in Elden Ring just because of the pure nature of the game. Because of the getting stuck on a boss, going on in the open world and exploring and leveling up. In other words... And this is something you weren't allowed to say when Elden Ring came out. It was my one critique, which now I actually don't think it's a critique. And it's it's what Elden Ring is. In Elden Ring, your character needs to get better. In all the other Souls games, you, the player, needs to get better. Elden Ring probably is the easiest Souls game. Or at least it was until the DLC came out. Like I said before, From Software are not stupid. They understood this point, which is why they added bullshit mechanics to certain bosses. With the DLC, over two and a half years after the launch of the game, they knew players were going to be overpowered as fuck. They knew this. So they added a whole other difficulty scaling to the Land of Shadow in uh, Shadow of the Earth Trees DLC area. They made it so it's super fucking difficult. You take much more damage and you deal way less damage. Your only way to counteract this is doing just like in the main Elden Ring game, going out, exploring, gathering these scattered tree fragments, and increasing your, uh, what's it called? The blessing, the scattered tree blessing. Just like the main game, you're stuck on a boss, go out, explore, and you're rewarded by your exploration. That is how uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree works. And when you play by those rules, it works incredible. It has a whole new difficulty scaling, a whole new uh, way to play the game. It's basically Elden Ring 2. That being said, for those of you who are complaining that the DLC is too hard, or even going a step beyond that and review bombing the game and saying it's shit because it's too hard. Uh, you're not, I hate to say this because it's kind of a meme in, in the Souls community or whatever that you're not playing correctly, but you are not playing correctly. Go out, explore the same way you did in Elden Ring. Go out, explore, find the scattered trees, uh, let your character get better, increase the blessing. And you'll be able to go fight the bosses at the same difficulty scaling as the main game. Just go out and explore. Just like you would in the main game when you were stuck on a boss. And here's another thing. A lot of the people you see complaining about the difficulty are streamers. 
streamers who don't typically go out and explore in uh, open world video games. They just like to beeline and rush the main quest as fast as possible. So, of course, streamers of all people are going to complain that it's too difficult. They don't explore. They go straight to the bosses. Of course, they're going to feel all the difficulty and all the fucking uh, fucking Shadow Realm uh, difficulty slapped onto them. Of course, they're going to feel that. And everyone complaining about it, or most of the people complaining about it, are streamers. So what you do is you go online, you see, uh, okay, let me watch a review on it, or let me watch a streamer watch it, or let me watch a streamer play it. And they're, they inevitably uh, get shit on by bosses, and they start complaining, oh my god, it's too hard, holy shit, let me, let me respec, let me maybe even quit the game, let me take a break. Uh, when in reality, they just need to go out and explore. Because that's the name of Elden Ring. That's what it was from day one. Like I said before, it's the easiest Souls game. In other Souls games, you, the player, need to get better. In Elden Ring, your character needs to get better. This was a complaint I had. Now I fully embraced it and I understood that is what Elden Ring is. And when I understood that, it didn't become a complaint anymore. I'm like, that's what Elden Ring is. And it's the same thing for the DLC. Go out, explore, gather the fragments, level your character up, and there you go. The difficulty scaling will be back towards closer co closer to the main game scaling, and you can actually enjoy the game. Or if you want to give yourself an extra difficulty, like what I did, and just stop at maybe 10 scattered trees. And there you go. You can, you know... Try to beat it with uh, it being even harder. Now, to end this portion of uh, the video, talking about the difficulty and the people complaining about the difficulty and all that stuff, I just want to say, why is it that Kai Sinat, someone who just started playing these games, has a better take on this topic than people who've been playing since Demon Souls, whenever the fuck that came out, 2008 or whatever, PS3. He basically said what I said. You need to explore. Your, your exploration is going to be uh, rewarding. Go out, explore, gather the shadow trees, go back, fight the bosses, and you should be fine. Why is he saying the most common sense shit when he just started playing these games? But everyone else seems to be complaining about the difficulty. Yes, it's fucking hard. It's even hard when you get the shadow trees. But at that point... That's up to you. That's completely up to you. If you get the scatter trees and you're still doing bad. I don't want to say it, but you, you know. You know what I mean. So, to move on to other things. Um, I think I want to start right now with the exploration. And how it works. And how it differs from the base game. So, basically, uh, in the Land of Shadow. There is much more verticality to the open world and the uh, certain levels you find. When I say the levels, I mean typically the legacy dungeons or just the regular regular dungeons slash castles, whatever you find. It goes up and down, man. There's fucking floors upon floors for every single um, dungeon, castle, everything. It Sometimes it just seems like it's go it goes on and on and on and on and on. There's the Cerulean Coast, which I think is the blue one. And I only realized later. So basically, it, it's, a, it's a, a coast, like a coastline with a bunch of glowing blue flowers. And I only realized later that the red portion on the map, which looks similar, but just was red, is basically the red version of that. And to get there, it was all the way up on the blue one. So I literally just looked up and I'm like, oh, shit, it, it's all there. It's on top. How am I going to get there now? That was around the time that I made it to the Dragon Pit Mountain. I forgot what it's called. Uh, okay, anyways. That, that was around the time that I made it there. So, you know, I did a bit of exploration. Banked right on the Dragon Mountain. And I found myself on the uh, Red Cerulean Coast. I forgot what it's called. But anyways, just to say that there's so much to this map. And, and it just really varies. Um vertically just so you guys understand what i'm saying uh this is the map by the way this is the cerulean coast the blue one and look how it looks overlapped it, you would think it's right next to it but charo's hidden grave which is the red one 
it looks very close, but it's actually all the way on top of this one. On this mountain that you see behind you when you enter the Cerulean Coast, all the way on top is Charles Hidden Grave. It really varies. This map doesn't do a good job of telling how vertical everything is. This right here, hold on. This, compared to this area, this ravine, it, it's so, this is so incredibly high up. It's insane. And that's just one example. There's so much other things that I could give an example for. It's truly incredible how they managed to completely change the way the exploration is done in the DLC compared to the main game while also making it feeling super rewarding and never overwhelming. Because let's say you do get to a bottom of a place, you know exactly how to get back up. Uh, and because of everything just looks looks so unique, you'll remember, okay, this is the second floor because it has this. This is the fourth floor because it has this. This is the seventh floor because it has this. Um, for there, I'm referring to the castle. But that castle, actually, I think it's... Uh, fuck, which one is it? It's the one where Mesmer's at. That one actually has a shit ton of, of graces everywhere. Which is something I'm going to get to now and I just realized. I, I just remembered it. There's maybe too many graces. Um, at Enir Ilim, the last castle you visit right before the final boss, I found a massive shortcut leading back to the uh, entrance of the castle. And just before the shortcut, there was a set of grace. And obviously at the beginning of the castle, there's a set of grace. So I'm like, w w why did I find the shortcut if there's already a grace here? So yeah, that's kind of a problem. Just like the main game, there are too many sets of grace. They're very uh, forgiving in that sense and very generous. But I mean, that's kind of what it is. Dark Souls 3 had the same issue, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Dark Souls 3 also had a shit ton of uh, bonfires. But Now, one last point for the verticality. Um, right here, this shrine, what's it called? The Nameless Mausoleum. When I first started the DLC and I... Was it... Is it even this? Yeah, okay, it's this one. When I first started the DLC and I... I You know, I was exploring just outside of Castle Ensis. And I saw this area. It was basically like... Not a floating rock, but just like a mountain with something... Very obviously like a... A shrine on top, okay? So I pinged it and... I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to find it later. Once I got to it, it took me forever. I was trying to get from this side of the mountain to here from here to here and I just couldn't until I did the entire turn going underground getting right under Enyar Ilim and the um what is it the raw ancients I found a uh you know those booster things what the fuck's it called anyways I found one of those and it took me all the way up to here and I'm and it just felt so incredibly rewarding not only that, but when I killed the boss in here, I got some pretty sick armor. So again, just like the main game, everything feels so incredibly rewarding. But just at a new scale, because everything, like I said before, is vertical. It's up and down. It's just, it, it seems never ending. So another point about the exploration is, just like the base game, there are many different ways to tackle the main uh, objectives and the main places you need to go to. For example, at, to get to Mesmer, to get to Mesmer um, I feel like most people would go through the castle, fight the hippo first, and you'll slowly make your way up. What I did actually was explore. I banked right on his castle, did the entire turn, reached the back of his castle where there's the water and you got to drop the water. And I basically did it through there and I ended up getting to, I believe, the loft of his castle. His loft straight to the seventh floor, hopped down the statue, and boom, I was, I was already at Mesmer. Instead of going from floor one to, I believe, four and then seven. I actually hit the lever when I got there through the back, which prevented me from getting to floor seven. Uh, to, which prevented me from getting to floor four. So I couldn't get the scatter tree on floor four and it drove me crazy for a full day because I knew, fuck, I'm going to fight Mesmer. I don't even have the scatter tree and I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be shit against him. And I was, of course, but you know, you overcome these things.
But on my way to finding the fourth floor, I actually found a, a whole other route that led downstairs to the complete rear of the, ca of the castle, leading to the Gaius fight, which eventually led to the Hinterlands, which is where I'm at right now. So, which is, again, all the way down, the verticality, it, it's so incredibly well designed. And, you know, once you reach the Hinterlands, or right before that, um, at Gaius, you kill him. We, we, he's a pretty tough fight, and, you know, all the mounted enemies have very similar attack patterns, which is kind of bullshit. But this one in particular is kind of tough. I found that uh, fighting Gaius off my horse was much better. Anyways, you defeat him, you go behind, you find a forge or whatever. And there's five scattered trees there. Perfect, boom. My, my exploration is rewarded. Me killing this boss is even more rewarded now. And not to mention, just next to him, you do an emote on the wall and you get access to the hinterlands, which is amazing. Now, speaking of the hinterlands, there's actually... Uh, a place called the Finger Ruins in Hinterland. And there are uh, actually two other Finger Ruins throughout the entire map. The first one I found was in the Cerulean Coast. Now, why am I talking about this? It's because when I first got to the Cerulean Coast, I saw the giant pit of the Finger Ruins. And I'm like, holy shit, I need to get there. There's probably a boss. I went there, no boss. It was actually very uh, disappointing. Same thing with the one at Hinterland. And same thing on the other one. I don't even know if there is another one. But anyways, uh, the finger ruin places are actually disappointing. Even if you do the quest, I feel like they are disappointing. It's kind of a waste of space. They could have easily put a boss or two there. But if you do the quest regarding Emir, it is kind of reward. No, I wouldn't even say it's rewarding. It's just kind of bullshit. They could have easily put um, bosses at those pits. That was a waste. That is disappointing to me. So now I would like to speak about the bosses. And I understand that you can't speak about the bosses without addressing the difficulty issues that I pretty much all mentioned all before. So I'm going to try my best to not reiterate the same facts that I did before. The bosses are really fucking hard. Not bullshit like millennia. They're just hard and well designed. And they do a lot of damage. And you take a lot of damage. That can be fixed, like I mentioned before, obviously. Either way, it's always going to be fun. The only one that wasn't fun and that was complete bullshit, or not complete bullshit, was the first dancing lion. Um, naturally, you're going to go want to fight him right away. You won't have a lot of scattered trees. And you're just going to get your ass kicked and kicked and kicked. The first one is probably one of the tougher bosses just from the start if you do get the scattered trees and you manage to fight him or get a lot of them and you manage to fight him you'll have a very easy time i didn't do that obviously i still powered through him with uh no scattered tree blessings but there is actually another dancing lion which i think i, I put a video out about the location it's on the raw ruins in that little coliseum area you get to fight him again, but this time with uh, most likely some more scattered tree blessings. And that is uh, a, a good test to see how you would do against this guy if he was in the base game regarding the difficulty. Because at that point in the game, you most likely have a lot of scattered trees. A lot of the DLC's bosses were incredible and had some really, really fun movesets to memorize and try to counterattack. Um, Radon in particular, who has a lot of, uh, different abilities he uses, different strikes. It, it, it's just really, really fun to memorize all of Radon's attacks. And also, of course, very, very rewarding. Same thing with Rolana. But Mesmer, for me, was actually the one I struggled with the most. And it was the boss that made me... Go out there and explore and find scattered trees because I absolutely needed them because I was getting my ass kicked. Speaking of Mesmer and the progression and pacing of the DLC, I understand that it's a good thing when the game lets you tackle certain objectives 
in whichever order you want. But I do feel like Mesmer is incredibly difficult and should have at least been the second to last boss. Like I said before, the way the game is structured, you can pretty much fight any boss you want at any time if you know done correctly. But I do feel like Mesmer should have been fought right after the Saint of the Bud. You kill Saint of the Bud, you kill Mesmer, you go burn the tree. I think that's how it should have pushed you more in that direction. Not the direction that I and many other people did, which is fighting Mesmer, pretty much the third main boss, then fighting the Bud, Saint of the Bud, which is um, a joke, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much the only issue with the natural progression of the DLC that I have. If you've been watching a lot of streamers or YouTubers play the DLC, you might have noticed them going back to Renala or fuck, I keep Renala from the base game to go and respec. That's because a lot of people throughout the DLC, specifically the people who aren't going and exploring, realize, holy shit, this is so fucking hard. I should probably respec and make a better build. This is something I did. And I gathered a lot of the scatter trees. Um, I didn't respec, but what I did was I kind of changed my build around just in the sense of the weapons I use. So I was using the Guts Great Sword with the. Yeah, I was using the Guts Great Sword and just spamming the claw, the spinning, you know, you know which one I'm talking about. I was just spamming that L2 throughout the entire um dlc until i got to radon and i'm like holy shit i'm not doing enough damage i'm a pure strength build i should probably power stance colossal weapons and i finally did and that helped a lot so not only was i gathering a lot of the scatter tree fragments which is supposed to make the game easier which it did absolutely but the last boss was still difficult enough that humbled me to the point where I changed my build around. I also started putting new talismans and I found a really good talisman. It's the turtle one from the base game that uh, gives you faster stamina regeneration. But the one I found now, I think it does greatly increases stamina regeneration. And I found that and I started using that. I also, when I got to the hinterlands, I think this is the, uh, what is this place called? Hold on. So wait, this is, Okay, the Shaman Village. At the Shaman Village, you find um, the braid, Mikola's braid or something, which negates holy damage by a lot. Which is amazing against Radon's second phase, where Mikola and Radon use a shit ton of holy damage. And, you know, you shouldn't feel bad for using uh, the certain elements that the game has and certain things that the game, that the game sh gives you. So uh, summoning at this point of the game, especially if you're a new game plus plus like I was, you shouldn't even be uh, ashamed to summon. I think this is going forward something that's going to be more normalized to people. People are going to be more okay with the idea of summoning because you know how it's been the past two years. Oh, you summon, you didn't beat the game correctly. Use magic, you didn't beat the game correctly. I think with the difficulty of the DLC, regardless of the, the, the existence of the scatter trees or not, Summoning will be more generally accepted, as it should, because we shouldn't shit on people for playing the game certain ways. It's just kind of stupid. Another minor complaint I have is one that the, again, my messages keep getting appraised. I wrote some dumb shit about edging somewhere, and I have like 170 appraises. Okay, anyways, another minor complaint I have is just like the main game. A lot of the boss weapons are D strength, D dex, and just they're magic based weapons. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? I kill Radon. I have two options for his swords. None of them are good for dex or strength. And, you know, by the time I got to the, the end of the DLC, I was like, you know what? I want to use new weapons, right? I don't want to still have this Guts Great Sword and this Game of Thrones sword. I want to use something different. I want to use something that I got from the DLC, you know? So I found two great curved swords. The Horn Warrior's Great Sword, 
which has an amazing Ash, uh, AOE Ash of War, which is fucking amazing, and Freya's uh, Curved Greatsword, which I now power stance, and I absolutely love it. Doesn't do as much damage as the Colossals, but that's what it is. I really want to use pure DLC weapons to feel like, you know, I, I gained, my character gained something out of it. But yeah, that's just a little complaint. I want more strength-based weapons from bosses, please. But I mean, it's too late now. Now to end this review, I'm just going to talk about uh, some of the last things that I haven't mentioned yet uh, regarding the music and the lore slash the story of uh, the DLC. The music is stellar. Holy shit. Some of the best boss music in all of Souls. The open world music is incredible as well. The open world music when you've uh, encountered an enemy, the way it ramps up, it's so good. The music, the open world music at night, it's incredible. The music throughout this entire DLC is stellar, seriously. Mesmer's theme, Lord of the Frenzied Flame theme, Radon's theme, of course. The music that plays here, the music that plays in, in different areas of the map. They absolutely nailed it. Now, onto the lore and the story of the DLC. I feel like the story was much more hands-on than in uh, some of the other games. But maybe that's just the way I played. I was interacting with a lot of the NPCs and I was um, doing a lot of their quests. So I had much more of an understanding of what was going on. For example, I knew pretty much from the second I got to the first floor of Mesmer's castle, speaking to Ansbach, that they were planning on reviving Radon somehow. Uh, the thing with uh, Needle Light Lita and how she wants to side with Mikola, everything, just, it was really well done. I, I absolutely love the story and everything they added to it. I completely view Mog, Moog and uh, Mikola's relationship completely different now, a whole new perspective on it. And I absolutely, just like everyone else, can't wait for Vati Vidya's video. That's going to be amazing. So now, guys, obviously we all knew the DLC was going to be incredible. I don't think anyone could have predicted the uh, slight controversy about the DLC's difficulty. And I didn't think people were going to have such strong opinions about it, considering... When Elden Ring came out, you were absolutely not allowed to say anything bad about it. Someone like me who had uh, opinions on the game, just you absolutely were not allowed to say it or you were called, you know, bad at the game or whatever. The opinions I have about the game two, two and a half years ago when it came out are opinions that are widely um, accepted now considering everything about the DLC. That being, you know, the game is generally very easy so they add bullshit mechanics because they know you're going to steamroll through. Um, I'm very interested in seeing how, what the general consensus is in maybe six months from now. How people view the DLC, how they view its, its difficulty, and what they do about it. If a lot of people go out there and get scattered trees or if a lot of people just want to power through it. I can see that being, you know, a challenge that people do. But I don't believe that is the main way to experience the DLC. Go out there, explore, gather the scatter trees, and progress through the game. And it's just an overall better experience. Guys, there really isn't much more to say. There isn't any complaints I actually... There isn't really any real complaints I have about the DLC. It's near perfect. I think this is... Probably the best there is in Elden Ring. This might even... This brought Elden Ring from my second favorite Souls game to maybe tied with number one, with Bloodborne. This DLC brought the game from maybe an 8.5 for me to closer to maybe like a 9.5. I think now the game is it's, it's near perfect. It actually fixed a lot of the issues I have with the main game. That being that it's too easy. There's now a way to challenge yourself even further. And if you want to go past that and not do it, you can. It actually fixed more about the base game than I could have ever imagined. Not only that, but the level design 
in the uh, DLC area is just, it's amazing. It's, it's arguably better than the base games. Exploration, same thing with the bosses. And some of the weapons, the new weapon classes are amazing also. The great, the great katanas in particular, those are so cool. I, I'm planning on making a whole new build structured around those specific weapons and power stancing them. But anyways, I think I've said my piece. Uh, I mainly made this video just because I really wanted to address the difficulty conversation. And uh, yeah, that's just my opinion about it. And that's basically my opinion of the whole DLC. It, for me, it's tied with Bloodborne now. It's some of the best content out there. It's better than most uh, single player games. It's probably the best game of the year so far. And uh, I don't think it should get nominated for game of the year. Because last year Cyberpunk's DLC didn't. And uh, DLCs probably shouldn't get nominated for that. But if it does, I'll be happy with it. Anyways, uh, go play it. It's so worth it. What is it, like 50 bucks in Canada? Go buy it. More content. I sunk 40 hours in three days. And I need to do it on another character. I need to do it on my mage and see how it plays with magic. Anyways, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah.